There are thousands, wait, hundreds of spider people in Across the Spider-Verse, but there's one character in particular that stole the show, both in terms of animation style and original character design. It's no surprise that Spider-Punk literally took years to animate. But what if I told you there was an easier way to animate it that didn't take as long and costs absolutely nothing? Blender. Just like in my last video, I'll be using this free Miles Morales rig with just a few little texture changes and some meshes that I got from this model on Sketchfab, both of which will be linked down below. I'm going to recreate this iconic shot from the trailer. So first off, we're going to find some references. References. And then we're going to start with blocking. For this animation, I'm using these three poses as my key poses. These are the ones that clearly define the movements taking place within the shot. Think of these as the most important poses on your animation. What action do you want to create? These poses will help you show this. For example, this first pose was designed to let the audience know what's going to happen. And because it's a very short animation, the main focus I'm trying to get across here is Spider-Punk playing the guitar. The second key pose is going to be Hobie striking the guitar. This pose is going to be the complete opposite of the first. Instead of having the arms and shoulders and chest bent over, we're going to be opening up the upper torso, arm and shoulder as if a huge amount of energy has just been released. Right now, I'm not thinking about timing or spacing. I'm just focusing on the key poses. And finally, the last key pose is going to be a settle, a kind of idle pose that you've probably seen in most video games. I want this pose to be semi-relaxed slash resting after the large action that's just happened. Now that the key poses have been made, the next step is to add the in-betweens. This is where we're going to start to look at the timing and spacing of the animation. Hobie was animated on a mix of twos and threes, so we'll be keeping that in mind when adding the in-between frames. These frames are what dictates how each pose flows between the next. So for the first one, I'm going to add some anticipation after the first frame to gear up for the big action that's going to happen. I'm also going to add another frame that's kind of a blend between the anticipation and the second key frame. This in-between frame, however, is going to heavily favour the first anticipation frame. And to do this, I'm constantly using the pose breakdowner to get the desired look. After I've added the in-betweens, we should have something that kind of resembles an animation. Great! Now here's where the real work comes in. I'm going to go through adjusting each pose by tracking the arcs of the things like the hips, the arms, the chest and the head. I also track the guitar too since it's quite a big part of this animation. You can track the arcs by heading over to the armature tab and selecting create motion path. When I'm tracking the arcs I'm adjusting each body part to make sure that the arc is as smooth as possible. As you can imagine this part of the animation takes the most time so you can see why it took nearly three years. And after all that hard work, we should have a nice bit of animation, animated on a mix of twos and threes, just like in the movie. I also added in a guitar pick at this point, and added a slight smear by creating a shape key and adjusting the blend. This was a really quick and dirty way of adding in a bit of detail, and you could definitely make it look a bit better with grease pencil or 2D effects. Speaking of VFX, we need to start work on the iconic line work. And to do this, I have to shout out Lilith on Twitter for posting this amazing solution which we're going to be using for this animation. This tweet and all the other resources are going to be linked in the description below. I start off by creating a geometry node group on the mesh and create a merge distance node. I set the distance to be fairly small, but depending on the size of your scene it might be a bit different. Next is the extrude mesh node, and make sure to uncheck the individual faces box. This will be the size of your outline, so make it as big or as small as you want. The next few nodes are convex hull and flip faces. This essentially flips the material inside out as we'll be looking at the inside of the mesh for some clever tricks. The last node in this setup is the material node. Now we want to use a new material for this and while we're creating the material we want to make sure the back faces culling is off and the blend mode is set to alpha blend. And there we have it. I adjusted the material on it to give it a flat shaded look. Also added a paper texture to make it feel more in line with the spider punk style. If you're adding a texture, make sure to set the UV coordinates to camera, otherwise you'll get some pretty strange results. I also added in some rotation to the mapping coordinates by creating a keyframe and adding a noise modifier. Since this won't match the animation, I added a step interpolation modifier and set the steps to 3 and the offset to 1. So now it should match with our animation. 
Once we're happy with that, it's time to do the exact same thing with the guitar, but make the meshes a little bit smaller. And as I was doing this, I realized there was some clipping, so I adjusted the animation accordingly. The final step for Hobie is to add in some line work, and we're going to be doing this with the use of grease pencil. I added a grease pencil stroke and deleted the points within the mesh. After that, I added a line art modifier with the setting set to object and selected the object that I wanted to be outlined. Tweak the settings a little bit to make the line work fairly thin to match the style of the movie. Next up, we're going to add a multiple stroke modifier to make the line work a little less neat and a bit more scribbly. I tweaked some of the settings and added an offset and a noise modifier to really tie it all together. The final step in creating this animation was recreating the lightning VFX scene on Hobie's guitar. And this was really simple and just involved me using the knife tool on a plane to cut out various lightning bolt shapes. I ended up making three different variations of this, a small, medium and large, and animated them accordingly. And to animate them, I lined them up with the guitar and keyframed the rotation and scale on twos, and also keyframed the visibility in and out as they got bigger. And finally, we're done. Although it didn't take three years to finish, it certainly did take a lot of time and effort just to create this really small animation. You can go even further with this shot by adding some graphic overlays or even adding a few black and white style frames just like in the film, but that is up to you. Please let me know in the comments how you think this video turned out and what you think I should do next. And if you enjoyed this video, give this video a like and consider subscribing to hear more animation tips in Blender. And if you're craving more Spider-Verse content, click this next video here. I promise it's a canon event.